In this video, we will work through some College Board multiple choice questions pertaining to arithmetic and geometric sequences. If you appreciate the content, please give it a like. Number one, consecutive terms of a sequence have the values two, negative one, one half, negative one fourth, and one eighth. Of the following, which describes the sequence? Notice that all of the options mention geometric sequences. In a geometric sequence, successive terms have a common ratio. Like this one has a common ratio of two because we can get from one term to the next by multiplying by two. And we call the common ratio r, in this case r equals two. You can find the common ratio by dividing each term by the previous term. In this case, six divided by three is two. Twelve divided by six is two. And twenty-four divided by twelve is two. Negative one divided by two is negative one half. So that's the first ratio. One half divided by negative one is negative one half again. So looking good for a common ratio. Negative one fourth divided by one half is the same thing as negative one fourth times two over one. This is going to be negative two over four, which reduces down to you guessed it, negative one half. Finally, we have one eighth divided by negative one fourth. But when you divide by a fraction, you multiply by the reciprocal. So this will be one eighth times negative four over one, which is negative four over eight, which is negative one half. The terms could be part of a geometric sequence with a common ratio of negative one half. So the answer is B. Number two, the terms of the increasing arithmetic sequence AN are positive. The terms of the increasing geometric sequence GN are also positive. The values of the first terms of both sequences are the same. And the values of the fourth terms of both sequence are also the same. Which of the following statements describes the values of the second terms of the sequence? If an increasing series is geometric, the values increase exponentially like this. If an increasing sequence is arithmetic, the values increase in a linear fashion like this. In the setup, we are told that the first term of both sequences are the same, and the fourth terms of both sequences are also the same. Under these conditions, as you can see, the value of the second term of the arithmetic sequence is greater than the second term of the geometric sequence. Because the second term of the arithmetic sequence must be greater than the second term of the geometric sequence, the answer is B. Number three, the fifth term of a geometric sequence is 24 and the sixth term is 48. What is the value of the tenth term? The nth term of a geometric sequence is given by gn equals gk times r to the n minus k power, where r is the common ratio and gk is term k, just some other term that you know. When given two terms of a geometric sequence, I always let gn be the higher index term. So I'm going to let gn be the sixth term and gk will be the fifth term. In other words, I will put g6 here and g5 here. We can use these two terms to find the common ratio. Uh, we do know that n minus k will be six minus five, which will be one, which I really didn't need to write. Now, we know that the sixth term is 48, so I will now substitute in the 48 and the fifth term is 24, so the 24 goes right here, and, and now we just have 24r. A little algebra, dividing both sides by 24, and we get two is equal to r. Now that we know that the common ratio is two, we can write a rule for the nth term of the geometric sequence. Gn will equal, and I'm still going to use g5 right here, for a moment, 
But instead of r, I will now put 2. And instead of n minus k, I will now put n minus 5. So to the n minus 5 power. But again, the fifth term is 24. So the full rule for gn will be 24 times 2 to the n minus 5 power. I can use this rule to find whatever they ask me for next, which is the value of the tenth term. In other words, what is the value of g10? That will be 24 times 2 to the n minus 5 is now 10 minus 5. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and put 5. So this is the value of g10. We just need to simplify this as much as we can. Memorize that 2 to the 5th power is 32. So that means the 10th term will be whatever 24 times 32 is. That turns out to be 768. So the answer is C. Number 4. The first term of an arithmetic sequence is 5 and the common difference of the sequence is 2. What is the eighth term of the sequence? The nth term of an arithmetic sequence is modeled by a n equals a k plus d times n minus k, where d is the common difference. Um, of course, a n is the nth term, and a k is term k. Let's write an expression for a n, the nth term of this arithmetic sequence. We are told that the first term is 5. So in other words, we are given a 1, and we will fill in 5 on the next step. We are also told that the common difference is 2. So let's put in 2 for d. n minus k will become n minus 1, because this is the k. Now let's substitute 5 for a 1. So we get a n is equal to 5 plus 2 times n minus 1. This is a rule that we can use to find any term, including the eighth term of the sequence. The eighth term will be given by a8, and that will be 5 plus 2 times 8 minus 1. So 5 plus 2 times 7. So the eighth term will be 5 plus 14, or A8 equals 19. So the answer is A. Number five, consecutive terms of a sequence have values 6, 2, negative 2, and negative 6. Of the following, which describes the sequence? Let's see if there is a common difference so we can tell if the sequence is arithmetic. From 6 to 2, that's a difference of negative 4. From 2 to negative 2, that's again a difference of negative 4. And then from negative 2 to negative 6 is a difference of negative 4. So there is a common difference of negative 4 between successive terms, therefore, the terms could be part of an arithmetic sequence with a common difference of negative 4, and the answer is A. Number 6. The general term of a sequence is given by a n equals 51 plus 3 times n minus 10, where a 0 is the initial value. Which of the following expressions also gives the general term of the sequence? You can get another version of the same rule by rewriting it without parentheses. So I'm just going to bring down the 51 and distribute the 3. So this will become 3n minus 30. Combining like terms, so we have 50 minus 30, that's going to be 21. So we get an is equal to 21 plus 3n. This is another version of the same rule, and the answer is C. Hey guys, don't forget to like and subscribe. 
But also, if you found this video helpful, there's a lot more where that came from. You can click the upper link, which will take you to the whole unit playlist, or you can click the lower link, which will take you to the next video in the playlist. See you there.